arts and aesthetic experiences impact our biology and behavior. The power of the arts is something we feel intuitively, but we'd like to understand that more. Igniting a symphony of activity, a complex physiological network of interconnected systems are involved. Technology has really uh, helped us um, better understand what happens in the brain and the body. So we are now able to understand how music or our dance or any other art form uh, can impact our physiology. Non-invasive technologies like fMRI, PET scans, EEGs, and mobile brain body imaging are tools that make visible the invisible. Don't you wake up yet, give me some time. We now know the higher order of brain systems that are most impacted by the arts, including cognition, emotion, reward, and movement, and biomarkers like heart and respiration rates and eye tracking are helping scientists develop a more complete picture of the body and brain on art. Scientists, clinicians, and arts practitioners are translating this knowledge into innovative arts-based solutions to the most challenging health issues around the globe. In people living with Alzheimer's disease, fMRI studies show that listening to familiar music activates a brain network spared from damage, where musical memories can still be enjoyed, while singing helps improve cognition. PTSD can block the brain region responsible for language and speech, known as BRCA's area. Using a mix of art forms, therapists are helping trauma survivors express themselves non-verbally so they can process their experiences and heal. Technology is catalyzing both research and practice, helping the field to collect, observe, and synthesize data to consider the right dose and dosage of art, including personalized prescriptions. There are a number of technologies that will advance neuroarts, and machine learning is one of them. Making arts-based solutions more accessible and scalable to individuals and communities around the world. The use of virtual platforms has increased participation and access to art therapy. Let's so, see it in action, <laughs> shall we? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Reaching populations that probably would not be uh, ordinarily exposed to various art forms. The convergence of science, the arts, and technology is revolutionizing how we care for one another, from the clinic to the communities we live in. With research in the neuroarts, we can reduce healthcare costs, improve people's lives, and gain a scientific understanding of the most mysterious thing in the universe, the human brain. Good afternoon and thank you for joining us. I am Renee Fleming, one of the co-chairs of the Neural Arts Blueprint Advisory Council. Today, we are releasing the Neural Arts Blueprint, a roadmap for bringing together people from diverse disciplines and communities who have the ambitious goal of improving health for everyone across age, gender, culture, and health status. This is something I passionately believe in. 
everything you will be seeing today, cutting edge science, breakthrough technology, and especially the very personal experiences of those who have benefited from the arts, send the same message. There is great value in cultivating the field of neuro arts because there is no longer any debate. Art is changing lives for the better. project had to do with a person with dementia and their caregiver joining in together actively uh, singing every week rehearsing and every 12 weeks having a concert where we would present to uh, families and friends and the community I must say I really cried because I watched Donald enjoy something so profoundly and just looking at him enjoy that was absolutely the most valuable thing to me. They are so proud to be there with their loved one, connect with the person that sometimes does not remember a lot about that relationship. And the connection that happens, it's like a spark. And that gives them hope. It's like respite for them. It's made me more aware of my singing voice, which I happen to enjoy. It's with the time that we can be totally in the moment. We don't have to think about anything else. The most important things, we never can lose our sense of a communication, and that's why the music is the vehicle. We're looking forward to celebrating our 10th anniversary. When COVID hit, we went fully on Zoom online, we were able to build a program that will still show our members that we're here, we're listening, we're supporting you, we're connecting with you. People were very, very eager to come back and have more new experiences, learn more new music uh, in different languages, with different rhythms, different melodies, <laughs> um, different challenges. People were able to take those challenges and really rise up to the occasion. It, it touches my heart and it, it, it makes me realize who he is on the inside and the outside. It doesn't matter the changes. He's singing these things and we share this authentic life together. So it's, it's, it's a joy, it's a gift to me. Johns Hopkins has, since its founding, been committed to fostering cutting-edge discovery and interdisciplinary collaboration in order to advance knowledge and promote human flourishing. Our International Arts and Mind Lab exemplifies this mission by bringing the best research and brain sciences into direct conversation with the practice and experience of the arts. We believe that the Blueprint Initiative will take the work of the Arts and Mind Lab even further in cultivating a neural arts ecosystem that extends beyond our university. We continue to learn so much about human biology and how humans respond to sensory stimulation, but I don't think yet that we have leveraged the full potential of that science, in part because we haven't transcended the barriers of disciplinary silos and given researchers and practitioners practitioners opportunities to interact and learn from one another. I really hope that this initiative and this partnership gives us the opportunity to do just that in the field of neural arts. Since our founding in 1949, the Aspen Institute has believed that both science and art are critical to driving social change. Uh, indeed, we see both themes as core elements of uh, working towards our purpose, which is to build a free, just, and equitable society. The Blueprint Project sits within our Eminent Health Medicine and Society program, which has an unmatched uh, reputation for putting together for inclusive dialogue that leads to real impact. And when we create truly inclusive spaces for problem solving, we can help people feel a sense of belonging that allows them 
to comfortably share their knowledge and lived experiences while also listening to others who may know something different. And all of that together leads to progress and generates the most powerful solutions. NeuroArts offers a truly unprecedented opportunity, and we can't wait to see where things go from here. Music therapy is a treatment modality that uses music to help clients reach non-musical goals. Luis was really paralyzed before, almost completely paralyzed. Luis couldn't move his arms. Your body is, <laughs> your body is really moving very well. The Healing Arts umbrella at NICO is it's excellent because of our partnership with the National Endowment for the Arts. NICO, which stands for the National Intrepid Center of Excellence, began as a four-week intensive outpatient program for active duty service members with traumatic brain injury and underlying psychological health conditions. Many of the service members coming through have a very difficult time verbalizing what they've been through, and this is due to an actual physiological change that occurs in the brain after either a traumatic brain injury or a traumatic moment in general that, that results in uh, PTSD. They're really looking to express their experiences in a new way. And sometimes they've been in other therapy programs for quite some time and just feel like they are stuck. They're not quite able to get there by putting words to what they're trying to talk about or they're not able to express their experiences that way. And so for many people, being able to put something into an image is completely fresh and different. Making my quilt, I had so many emotions. I thought about my trauma, the combat trauma, and through the combat trauma, how anxiety, depression, and all these feelings came to me. So I showed it to my mentor. She knew that I really wasn't myself. And if I could put on a mask, I could make it through anything. It allows me to face and focus on uh, a lot of the shadows that I carry around. I get in, in the flow state, hours will fly by, but it provides me an opportunity to heal. I just feel free. I've actually had several people tell me, it took me six months or a year or more to tell my therapist about that, and you got it out of me in one hour. How did that happen? My name is Eric Nestler. I am one of the co-chairs of the NeuroArts Blueprint Advisory Council and director of the Friedman Brain Institute at the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai in New York City. Our next segment highlights research as foundational to understanding the complex biology of the arts and driving NeuroArts forward. It is my tremendous honor to introduce you to a man who really needs no introduction. Dr. Francis Collins, director of the National Institutes of Health. From leading the Human Genome Project to guiding research on COVID-19, Dr. Collins has had a transformational influence on global health. A talented musician himself, he has also helped elevate scientific research into the arts at NIH and has been a tremendous supporter of the NeuroArts Blueprint Initiative. Dr. Collins recently announced his retirement from NIH, but we are confident that he will remain a steady ally in our work. Francis, thank you so much for being with us today. Thanks, Eric, for that kind introduction, and thanks to the organizers for the invitation to speak at this important event. As a medical doctor and a biomedical researcher and longtime director of the world's largest supporter of biomedical research, the National Institute of Health, I have a profound appreciation for the importance of scientific evidence. But also as an avid, if amateur musician, I have a similar appreciation for the many benefits the arts can bring, both to the artists who practice them and to the diverse audiences transfixed and transformed by them. 
So I found recent advantages in technology and in our understanding of the brain, particularly with our new brain initiative, these are shedding really interesting light on what happens as far as the intersections of mind, music, medicine, and other arts as well, dance, visual arts. And how could we harness that even more effectively to improve the lives of individuals with a wide range of health challenges? From PTSD and Parkinson's to autism, Alzheimer's, traumatic brain injury, chronic pain, it's a long list. Today, we're building a broad and deep body of research that's demonstrating the value of the arts as a tool for advancing health and well being. There's a growing literature base on this, but there's much room for further research. And this is the right moment to enhance that research enterprise, given the way in which we are growing in knowledge of how the brain works on an almost daily basis. So NIH is committed to supporting this effort, not only through dedicated funding opportunities, uh, as we are doing now with our Sound Health Initiative, but also through helping to develop tools and resources for the research community. We want to facilitate rigorous research, pave the way for effective therapies for as many conditions as possible, and move this approach into the area that has a firmer foundation of scientific evidence. It's likely that lessons learned from work we've supported in music and health will be useful for future research on other art forms like dance, like visual arts. So as we seek to learn more, we rely on a commitment to transdisciplinary science, which is essential to growing our knowledge base and is often where the sparks really fly. <laughs> This has been my goal from the start of my involvement in the effort to bring music and medicine together. An effort crystallized by my meeting Renee Fleming and the following conversations and performances and workshops and visionary meetings that have happened since then. Renee and I both knew that music theory and therapy and the neuroscience of music had been working in parallel for decades, it was time to focus on creative efforts to make those parallel lines converge to the benefit of all. And now we have a grand step forward in the evolution of this burgeoning field, what we're here to celebrate today, the Neuro Arts Blueprint. It comes at just the right time, giving us a roadmap so that we can keep learning and make full use of what we discover. And I'm counting on this program leading to many more insights and ideas about how we can keep this momentum going and maybe even expand and enhance it. We started classes with a small group at the Mark Lawrence Dance Center, about six people, and the program over the years has really grown from that initial cohort into a global program. We now have affiliates in more than 25 countries around the world. We are blessed now with quite a lot of research, more than 40 peer-reviewed studies on the impact of dance on Parkinson's. I was diagnosed with Parkinson about two weeks after having a major heart attack. I come to MBS on Tuesday mornings for the Dancing with Parkinson's program that they're running. It's a research project and a, and a therapeutic program, both combined. What we're adding to this field is trying to find out where in the brain it's changing as a function of dance. Just in our preliminary results, we're seeing improvement in gait, um, improvement in balance, uh, which is really important for this population. Some research has shown that uh, even before the onset of the motor symptoms that you might notice a person with Parkinson's might fall into depression. When they're moving to the music, they even sometimes forget they have Parkinson's. What dance helps do is it helps create bridges across these circuits. Did you know how to dance before you started this program? No, I never danced in my life. What our research really hopes to provide is a, a, a neural map of people who are dancing with Parkinson's. First time really I'm enjoying my retirement in many ways. I see the therapeutic effects of it, 
anticipate it. I, it. It's like learning a whole new language. I've learned to be able to express myself in dance, which is something that totally abstract and foreign to me before this. Wow, what a powerhouse series of presentations we've been enjoying. Our journey to this moment has been two years in the making, two years of broad and deep research, two years of conversations with global leaders, pioneers, and advocates, two years of building a network of people who understand the power of combining their assets to advance health and well-being. We have learned so much in that time and welcome today's opportunity to tell you more about our vision. The NeuroArts Blueprint that we are releasing today is a guide to cultivate an entirely new field. You've already heard a lot about the contributions that science, art, and technology each make to its growth. Our job now is to explain how we plan to tie all of that together and why we must to create an ecosystem that is so much more than the sum of its parts. A commitment to equity is one of the imperatives embedded in this document. We believe wholeheartedly in an intentional, inclusive approach in which diverse populations are fully represented. At every stage of development, the neural arts ecosystem must be designed to serve the individuals and every community here in the United States and around the globe. Another one of our grounding principles is that the arts are core to being human. In every culture across time and place, people have used dance, music, theater, painting, and so many other forms of creative expression to tell their stories. They have already proven what science is only now able to explain. To make neural arts a full-fledged energetic field, we need to focus on five broad areas, research, arts practice, education, funding and policy, and capacity building, including leadership and communications. An ambitious action step to strengthen the research foundation is developing an interactive arts and health research platform so that everyone can share and build on early findings. We also believe it is critical for the scientific community to think broadly about what constitutes rigorous evidence and to honor the many ways of knowing. In the realm of practice, we need to empower arts practitioners as equal partners with scientists and ensure their voices are heard. And we need to foster more collaborations in healthcare, community, and workplace settings where the arts can be fully integrated into health-related activities. Turning to education and training, we urgently need well-defined pathways for professional growth and creative approaches to coursework. Beyond traditional academic classes, there should be a place for online courses and workshops, grand rounds, internships, and mentoring. To thrive over time, we must find sustainable sources of funding and advocate for supportive policies. We are so grateful to the early champions who have elevated neural arts, but growth also demands institutional partnerships. If we can demonstrate that investing in evidence-based arts practices pays off, we may be able to influence insurance reimbursement decisions and other commitments from public and private sectors. We also need an agile fundraising strategy and incentives that appeal to philanthropies, health-related companies, employers, and others. Finally, a solid infrastructure will help build momentum. That includes a multi-dimensional communication strategy to frame neural arts as an ecosystem, message effectively, and share compelling stories. Together, these recommendations will foster culture change. We know that does not happen quickly, but with so much energy and passion already dedicated to neural arts, we can nurture a mature field that marries robust empirical evidence with innovative practice to ease some of the most intractable health problems the planet faces. What an exciting future lies ahead for neural arts. My name is Mike Pasternak, and I'm another co-chair of the Neural Arts Blueprint Advisory Council. For many years, I was also president of Motion Picture Production at Lionsgate. And that is where I learned the power of storytelling. As we build more evidence, we also need to hold the larger purpose of the field in our minds, and that's improving the health and well being of individuals in their communities. That is what you'll witness in the next video. From the youngest age to the oldest, across numerous modalities and health conditions, art is changing lives for the better.
HEART is a psychosocial support program used by Save the Children in more than 30 countries around the world. To date, the program has supported more than 1 million children, and it's based on the methods and techniques of the creative art therapies. Children engage in short arts-based relaxation activities to support muscle relaxation or breathing, things that help children to physically and mentally relax. The HEART program also includes a structured step-by-step -step art making process which is focused on a specific topic or theme. After children finish, they come together in what we call a sharing circle, where they share their art and what it represents or what it means to them. The sharing process helps to develop understanding of both themselves and each other. Young children describe enjoying the art making and enjoying time with their friends. They also like to share what they experience in heart with others. For example, we see children teaching their parents and caregivers how to calm down when they feel stressed. It is also important to note that the heart program intentionally uses many different art forms, from drawing to painting, sculpture, music, dance, drama, bookmaking. By ensuring exposure to and engagement with different art forms, different senses will be used. Different processes of decision-making and problem-solving and organizing will take place. And therefore, different parts of the brain will be stimulated in ways that support positive brain function. Evaluations of the HEART program have demonstrated numerous benefits, including children becoming better able to express themselves, better able to communicate, to concentrate, and to problem solve. So the impact of heart can be social, emotional, and neurological. And this combination helps to promote mental health and psychosocial well-being, as well as learning and development in children. On so many levels, I am profoundly aware of how important the arts are in our lives. Movement lifted me from a bow-legged boy with braces on my legs into the world of dance and choreography. And now it has given me the immense privilege of collaborating with extraordinary dancers to tell stories about our world that need to be told. Stories of pain and beauty. Stories that help us understand one another. Stories that inspire us to make things better. Alvin Ailey and the Neural Arts Blueprint have much in common. We both have a vision for what the arts can do to heal the body and mind, individually and as a collective. We both understand that the future is not yet written and that we need to be creative and determined to reimagine the possibilities. And we both recognize that no dancer, no artist, no idea can blossom alone. It takes an ecosystem to make that possible. A place where a multitude of people with different talents, experiences, and points of view can each make a distinctive contribution and together reach a common goal. The video clip you're about to see, an excerpt from Testament, affirms the power of that coming together. Thank you for watching.
you for being part of the effort to cultivate the field of neuro arts. Please take a look at the full neuro arts blueprint, which is online now. You can find it at www.neuroartsblueprint.org. On the same website, you can add your name to our mailing list and receive periodic updates about our activities. We have a webinar planned for January to discuss the continuing evolution of the NeuroArts ecosystem, and you can also sign up for that. As the field gains traction, we'll be reaching out to encourage your involvement in other ways as well. And we very much hope you will continue on this journey with us. Mm -hmm.